held you too. But I can't, my left hand is paralyzed, so I can't applaud you. Well, can I? I can say I can't clap because I have a disability. My left hand won't work. Or I can say I have an ability because my right hand works. And with that one hand, I can eat, drink, drive, write a book, and I can applaud you. So what is the sound of one hand clapping? Let's go ahead and raise our hand. Bring your fingers to your palm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Music to my ears, but I have to tell you, the sea of faces and the hands in the ear, beautiful. Great, is there another way we can clap with one hand? Let me hear it. You see, there's more than one way to solve a problem, and there's still one other way, and this beautiful lady here, could I have you just pop up here for a second? And I'm going to have you come up, up on the stairs, if that's okay. I'm going to have you raise your hand up and just keep it towards me. And keep it straight. <laughs> that is what I call giving someone a hand. Ed, would you come up? <laughs> So you've got this hand, this hand, this hand, when it, where you, can, you can't lift this hand because it's paralyzed. But first of all, you're going to have a problem because if you get that strap on this shoulder, you've still got to do the bra up. So the way that I do this is I would hook the bra first. And that's why it's over my knee and the knees are together so that it's kind of like a little table. And you're going to hook this first. <laughs> the shade of the bride yet. <laughs> Not yet. Lift it as in and put it through the strap. So that's why it's important. Well, see, you've got a lot of movement in that hand. <laughs> you're, you're, you're taking your strong hand and helping your weak and lifting this over. And then you can put your strong hand in there. So you. Oh, uh, hang on. Yeah, so you, no, you want to. And then what you want to do is put this on like a t shirt. So you would put your. There you go. And then you adjust yourself. You know what, Ed? There were both of us doing it up here. Somehow we did it wrong. <laughs> Like a t-shirt? 
don't know your head, and your strong hand would be helping you. So you put on with the strong. Put on, I'll put on with the weak, excuse me. Put on with the weak and take off with the strong. But yes, you've got a problem. <laughs> Teamwork definitely comes in because we're going to have to try to unhook this now. I think I can do it my. Well, I think we should just take it over the head. <laughs> Let's give our volunteers. What happens is my hand's up here now. When I go to leave, I've got to remember to take the hand with me. <laughs> but I have to tell you, this is a great stretch. It feels really, really good. Kate was planning to be a fitness trainer when in 1995, at age 33, the mother of two suffered a massive stroke. I was trapped in my body, totally aware of everything going on around me. I just couldn't communicate. And it wasn't until my husband asked me a simple question. I realized I could blink my eyes. And with all my strength, I did that. I remember blinking out, am I going to die? Every day was a struggle, but it was a struggle born of one simple dream. Kate wanted to go home. She, in 1997, Kate traveled to our nation's capital to help the American Heart Association launch a national campaign for women's health. Kate Adamson was 33 years old when she suffered a stroke, leaving her paralyzed for 70 days. Unable to communicate with the outside world, she has since made a miraculous recovery. And the condition I had is called locked-in syndrome, where basically I was trapped inside my body and unable to communicate with the outside world. Wow. You know, again, you look at you, you hear you, and it really is uh, miraculous uh, to see the recovery. And uh, I have to say, it's somewhat inspiring. You like, came out of it. Did you think you were going to die? I thought I was going to die when I was in the critical stage for those 70 days. Yes. You had thought process. I actually, yes, mm -hmm. I did. But I still wanted to fight. Kate was determined to find a way back, no matter how difficult the journey, no matter how long it would take. I started keeping a journal when I was in rehab and a, a girlfriend of mine would write entries in it when I couldn't write and the social worker suggested that I start doing it because I needed to learn to write again and I remember saying to her, but what do I write about? And you know, she said, just write about what you've, what you've done today. That journal became a remarkable document telling of a journey that few thought possible. It tells of huge struggles to make minuscule progress. Let me just grab a, a grapefruit while I'm here. Now, your right hand seems to be completely back to normal. Stronger. Stronger. No problems at all there. This is where you go head up and towards the ceiling. Good. She still takes her daily dose of physical therapy to keep fit and improve her skills little by little. I hope that the story of my journey has given courage to your heart, strengthened your soul, and if it does, then the journey was worthwhile. Thank you.